Hi everyone, my name is Lavinia and today I'm going to try and show you how to make a card that I posted on the Demonstrator uh, Facebook group recently and had lots of requests to show how it was made. Unfortunately it was a commission card so I no longer have it. However, I have a picture of my iPad so I'm going to do my best to see if you can see it this way. I'm not sure whether that's capturing it very well. I will try and add a separate picture um, to the video once it's completed. But anyway, as you can see, it's a, a card with three folds. It's called an accordion fold. And there are dies that can do this, but obviously that's a bit of an investment. And I want to show you a way that you can make this without the use of dies. All you're going to need is a circle cutter, glass cutting board, and um, a scoreboard, and obviously a pair of scissors. And then whatever you want to use to decorate your card. So let's get started. So you're going to need three pieces of cardstock cut to um, five and three quarter inches by six and a quarter inches and you're going to score them from the long side down at um, a half an inch okay so you need three pieces like that and then when you've got those cut um, you're going to need to snip off the corners so that you don't see them when you fold them when you attach the bits together. Now, so first of all, we're going to have to make an aperture within this um, space. So if you take your ruler, you're going to need to find the center, the center um, of the square. So it's very easy to do. You go from corner to corner, and you just make, oh, <laughs> that went well. Light pencil mark there, and a light pencil mark there. Then you're going to take your circle cutter. Now this is the one that I use. Uh, you may have a different one. They're very cheap to buy but they're very effective. So I'm going to need this at um, 11 and a half centimeters. This happens to be in centimeters so uh, that's what I'm going to have to go with. So obviously it looks a lot less because it doubles it when you it's kind of half the diameter of the circle. So 11 and a half, bear with me because this is a little bit stiff, there's about there, so you tighten your circle cutter and you put the point in the centre of the crosshairs that you've just made. Now you'll see that when I, when I cut my card with circle cutter I prefer to move the card than the cutter. Everybody will have their own techniques but this is how I do mine might not be the best way but it works for me that's all that matters right so when you've done a complete circle I always like to go around again just in case it's missed anywhere you can kind of feel when it's going through because it, it's kind of it, it sticks where it's not completely cut so now we have uh, a piece with an aperture in it and here's some I prepared earlier so there are your three outside pieces. Now, the inside piece is slightly more complicated, but not really once you know what you're doing, it's fine. It just takes a bit of practice. So for this, you're gonna need five quarters of an A4 piece. So as if you'd cut it uh, in half, as if you were making a card, and then in half again. So this would be um, 10 and a half by 14.8, okay? Now I've made a little template here because I think that's just a lot easier. So I've already worked out the centre of this piece of card. And as long as my other pieces of card are the same size, then you're good to go. So you're going to measure at 5.25 centimetres and 7.4. And again, you're going to make your crosshairs. Now I've made a little hole here so I can always just put my pencil through it to mark where the circle cutter needs to sit. What you're also going to need to do is... Uh, half a centimetre from the centre point, you're going to make a mark. So this is one centimetre in total, top and bottom, okay? So we're going to use our template to do this. We'll see how easy it is, because you're going to make more of these. It's handy to have it pre-done. So I'm going to make the mark there. Then just slide this down just a small bit. Make your marks here. I'm sorry if my head gets into shot occasionally. I hope not, but if it does, I'm... Sorry. <laughs> uh, 
and then the same down here. Now once that's done you can get rid of your template and you're just going to need to make some pencil lines again. One. Okay, now again we take our circle cutter. Now the inside bit is going to be um, 10 centimeters. So we just need to adjust this. As I said, it's a bit stiff. I have another one that I can't find. So this is a relatively new one. And it's just not as slidey as the other one. Okay, 10 centimeters. So again, we're going to put the point where the pencil mark is. And then, actually, before we do that, we're going to cut a half moon here and a half moon here. So you're not going to cut this middle section here, okay? It's very important. So, again, I prefer to move the card rather than the circle cutter. But, each to their own. I went a bit far, never mind. I don't know if you can hear the difference on the video, but... It moves differently, it makes different sound once it's actually cut through the card. And then you do the same on the other side. And again, just go over this to make sure it's completely cut. I think you can hear it really easily that it's done. Okay, so um, now what we're going to need to do um, is put a score line halfway through. Okay. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. So here's my scoreboard and my scoring tool. So we're just going to line up the points anywhere. It doesn't really matter, but you'll see where the mid midpoint is from doing that. So my, my lines are lined up against, because this is Imperial, this is Metrica. Living in this country, it's been really interesting working between Imperial and Metric. So you'll have to excuse me if sometimes I, I flip from one to the other. So we're going to score this just down to where the circle line would be if we'd actually cut it, okay? And the same on the other side. I know this might seem slightly complicated now that we're doing it, but trust me, when you've done this a couple of times, it'll be like second nature. So now this is when you're going to need your scissors. And we're going to cut these lines just up to the circle. same on the other side. The reason I score before I cut is because it's much easier to score a solid piece of card than such a thin strip. But if you were to cut it afterwards it wouldn't make a huge amount of difference to be fair. Right now in order because you may make these cards in different sizes okay so in order to know where you need to cut this you're just going to line this up with your aperture. Now I eyeball this, there's probably a more scientific way, but you can see that there's the same kind of aperture all the way around, okay? And the shape that you're trying to get, the one side is going to need a triangle, and the other side stays straight, okay? So just draw a line up to the top to meet um, where the top circle starts. And the same down here. You can rub these pencil lines out afterwards, so it doesn't matter. And that's all you need to do. So then you can remove this, so you know it's going to sit perfectly. You're then going to cut down the score line to where your little triangle starts. And you're just going to cut that down to meet the circle. And the same on this side. I hope this is still in proper shot, because I can't actually see what it is filming. I don't have a terribly professional setup, because I hardly ever do this. So. <laughs> Hopefully it's all doing well. Right, and then the last thing we need to do is the straight bit. We're just going to cut to the score line, okay? As if you're following the, the line of the circle. I'm going to turn this around to this side. And that's it. So then you have a little score line here already. So just work that score line so that it's already done before you try and stick anything. So that's, that's it really. Um, as we're going to cover these, I'm not too worried about rubbing out all the lines, just the, uh, 
the very end ones, perhaps, if you're layering a circle that is slightly smaller. Oh, and I meant to say as well, okay, if you're going to um, cover this with patterned paper, then what I would suggest you do is before you change the setting on your circle cutter, cut the aperture from your um, patterned paper because then it will be exactly the same size. It's very hard to get this to within like a fraction of a millimetre. So do that before you start cutting any other sizes. All right. And the same for these. If you want to cover all of this with uh, patterned paper, cut the circles while it's still on the same setting. Okay, that was an important piece of information I almost forgot to tell you. So now we have all our pieces. What we're going to need to, oh, sorry. I'm not thinking ahead here, am I? Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to stick these down. Yeah, make this slightly shorter. I did do that with the other ones and not with this one, I don't know why. So we're going to put um, we're going to put a bit of glue at the top and the bottom here. This feels a bit like you're doing an unscripted play, you know, it's all off the cuff. <laughs> so a bit of glue there. Sorry, I hope I'm still in frame here. And I have to apologise also for the bad lighting, but I'm struggling with a very sunny day here today. Um, which is not helping the uh, the lighting situation here at all. Okay, so that looks about central. And you can just stick this down. Because you're using glue, if it's not completely right, you can still move it slightly if you need to. There we go. And you do that for all three pieces. And notice I'm always keeping my score line on one side. Oh, the is running. Um, and I'm putting the um, messy glue. Oops. Let me put the top on that for a second, otherwise it'll run everywhere. Um, I'm always putting the little triangle on the same side as well. if I didn't have glue on my fingers. I'll stick myself to the card. Two. Bit ironic, we finally got some nice weather. I'm sitting inside crafting. Hmm, don't know what that says about me. <laughs> Okay, now you can decorate these before you stick them all together or you can do it afterwards. One tip, you definitely want, if you're going to do a solid piece of paper over this, you're going to want to do that before you stick these bits together to the other bits. It'll all make sense in a minute. Let me get rid of the glass mat because we no longer need this. Oh, it's kind of heavy. So now we have three pieces like this and what we're going to need to do is attach them together. Um, the way you see them lying here. So I'm just going to use a little bit of glue. So hopefully you can see it's all been quite straightforward until now. And uh, I say until now, it's not actually going to get any more complicated than this to be fair. So just leave a little bit of room uh, don't put it right on top of the fold because otherwise you might have difficulty depending on which way you're going to fold the fold if that makes sense. Um, second piece, third piece even. So there you go. So now they're all attached together. Obviously, well, like I said earlier, if you're going to do any decoration of these front panels, you're going to need to do that before you attach the circles together because otherwise um, 
you won't be able to get the paper over the top anymore. Now let's assume that you've decorated the, the front however you wish. Then you're going to need some little tabs to stick these together. So these are about half an inch or three quarters of a centimetre by about three centimetres. And all I'm doing is just folding them in half. In actual fact I only need two, don't I? Think I'll add here, sorry. So, bear with me. We're going to apply a bit of glue here. I think I might need a new glue, whoops. Uh, this is a bit like live telly, isn't it? Hold on a second, let me get a different glue. That's more like it. Invariably when I'm crafting I end up with everything sticking to me. <laughs> or with very inky fingers, one or the other. Or both. Right, now. This one we're going to fold forward. And then this one we're going to fold back. And then we're going to need to stick these two together, okay? So, the easiest way to do that is just line these up. Take one of your glued pieces and slot it in there. And just hold it until it takes. That's and then you're just going to need to fold it the other way. So that's one side. And then this, these two, sorry, I'm making a mess here. These two are kept stuck together on the back. So again, just line the circles up with each other. To the glue piece. And put your tab on the back. And there you have the basic structure, okay? So it folds, that went well. It folds completely flat. Now you can see that we've got a tab left over, so all you need to do with that is just cut it off. Probably should have done that earlier, but never mind. Let me just quickly do this. There we go. And that is your basic card structure. Now obviously in order to decorate it the way it was in my um, original card, um, I've used the um, Springtime Foils DSP from um, Stampin' Up. Fortunately it's no longer available, but for those of you who have it, um, and you want to get the ombre effect that was on my card, let me see if I can pull the picture up again. Uh, hopefully you can see this. So the top is powder pink Oops. and then in the middle is flirty flamingo and then the bottom is um, Melon Mambo and it's foil so it's really pretty and I've used some of the offcuts for the center as well. Um, the bottom layer here is uh, copper foil and then the white layers on the top, I've, it's just literally white cards and I've very lightly braided it with, with some powder pink to not make it so really bright. And then the flowers and the leaves have just been coloured in with um, uh, Stampin' White markers and the blends. And then I'll just show you this paper because it is absolutely fabulous. I don't know if you can catch the, uh, the foil on that there. But of course, you know, you can you can decorate these cards any way you like. And there's loads and loads of examples on Pinterest um, that you can get ideas from. 
that's the basic structure. So if you don't have the dies and you'd like to make an accordion fold, this is how you do it. Hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, I'd be very grateful for any comments or feedback. Um, hopefully only positive, but if you've got something constructive to say, I'm happy to read that too. Thanks so much for your time.